Um, welcome everybody. It's Jane McElvaney Kuntz and today we're going to do refining of our water lily painting. Unfortunately the uh, recording last week didn't work but hopefully this week it will. Um, one of the things I did is when I'm doing a demo I can't step away from my work and look at it from a distance which is very important to do when you paint. So today when I came down here and looked at it I took out a piece of pastel and kind of redrew a couple things like I decided to make this water lily a little bigger I don't know if you can see that green line right there but I kind of redrew where maybe I wanted another uh, thing there and I'm going to move that bud from up here down there so hopefully that will um, help me as I start doing this so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with the flower we're going to refine the flower and then we'll talk about re uh, refining the leaves and then the water and in this photograph, of course, we have those clouds that are reflecting in the water, so we'll do that too. Mm -hmm. right, so let me turn around. Please let me know if you cannot see the screen or if my head gets in the way. Unmute yourself and tell me that, and I will move a little bit. Um, so I did, as I drew, as I looked at this today, I realized I got my flower a little taller than it really should be, so I am going to drop this just a little bit. Um, Somebody needs to mute themselves. And what we're going to do is, when you paint flowers, I want you to think of flowers in pretty colors as the light hits them. I mean, these, these are white flowers, and yet notice that there's lots of different colors of white. So where the sun hits it, it's going to be a warm white, a creamy white. You could use white with Naples yellow. You could use white with cad yellow light. Um, you might even use white with a little yellow ochre. Uh, in the shadow areas, it might look, it may look gray to you, but don't just make it a pure gray, like half brown, half blue, right in the middle. Make it a bluish gray, or it might look like a purpley bluish gray. Or maybe you even see some pinks in places. The, when you add color to your shadows, they become much more interesting and much more fun to look at. Uh, so think about things like that. In this case, this flower does have the stamen peeking out. And again, that's probably the last thing. I'm sorry? The, the stamen is peeking out. I would probably paint the petals first, let this dry, and then the stamen would be the last thing that I put in there. So let's begin. And I'm going to start with the flower. And I want to move this flower down just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of a warm color. I'm going to take maples and a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to, and where I put the bottom of the flower before was there, I'm going to move it down here a little bit. I'm going to make some adjustments as I paint. It. And as we paint the petals, we want to have a one side that feels maybe like the light's hitting it, so it's a warm shadow, maybe maples and white. Or you could also use, like I said, cad yellow and white. That makes a pretty warm white. Uh, a lot of white, though. We don't want this to look like a yellow flower, so you got to add a lot of white to it. And for the shadow colors, we're going to use, you know, maybe like ultramarine blue, a touch of alizarin, get sort of a purpley blue, and again, a lot of white. If it looks too purpley uh, for your taste, you can add a pinpoint of burnt sienna to gray it a little bit. So let's begin, and I'm going to start down here with this one, since I'm, I'm moving this just a little bit. I'm going to take my blue-gray and pull the shadow right here for the side of this petal. And there is some light hitting it. And so I'm going to come in. It's not particularly real bright white, but I could do, do sort of a very white with just a tiny bit of blue in it so that it feels lighter but not as light as some of those warmer colors. Um, and I always kind of, at this point, want to blend what I put down. So last time we just blocked in, we didn't worry about blending. This time we're worrying about blending. I could actually even lower that a little bit. Since I'm lowering the bottom, let's lower the top. And let's then work our way. Here's another petal over here. Again, um, this petal is in shadow at the bottom, but it catches light sort of at the top. So I'm going to put a little 
purpley blue gray right there and then maybe a little creamy color right here on top and so that it doesn't look like stripes I'm going to just pull the light into the shadow and blend it a little bit. We will straighten up the edges in a minute when we put in the background. This uh, petal here should be much darker so I'm going to use more of the blue gray a little bit in a darker fashion and put it in there and um, it doesn't really have any light hitting it at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in. Except for where it comes down into the center of the flower. In there, I think I might use just a little yellow ochre and white, just so that it has a warmish feel, but not that white creaminess. That So right as it comes in here, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre. And as I put it down, I'm going to wipe my brush, and I'm just going to pull it out into the blue-gray just to sort of soften that shadow color. Uh, we have another petal that's very, is catching light with the maples in white, maybe over here. I'm sort of redrawing this because I left some things out before. So here's the lighter portion and the shadow underneath that. And again, I don't want it to look like stripes, so I'm just going to pull the light into the shadow just a little bit and straighten out my short hair. I also might actually shorten that one. I'm going to, if this is the color of the flower, when we draw in the background, this will be the end of that one. Then. And then this bottom petal, it is in shadow right as it gets close to the base of the flower, but out here it's lighter. And I kind of blocked it in pretty good that way, so I'll leave that light. But as I come in, I'm going to go with my darker uh, blue-gray shadow and let it get pretty dark right in here as it comes down to the base of that flower. And again, soften where it transitions from light to shadow. And, and this one here is where you might see some interesting color. You might see it sort of, it is in shadow, but um, I also see a little bit of kind of pinky purple in places. I'm going to put a little bit, it's almost like a little dimple or dividing line right there. And on this side, a little bit lighter. Not much, but a little bit. So I'm using what I put down last week, but I'm adjusting things to, if I think my drawing's off a little bit or if I want to um, darken places a little bit. The other thing you can do, too, is where things touch down, like right in here, we might go ahead and get a little bit of darkness just so that it feels like that's the base of the flower. I do Jane, think, yes. This is Diane. What yes. size brush and what kind of brush are you using? Right now, I'm using a soft hair brush. I'm using a, a bright that is a monarch, and I would say it's, let's say it's a size. Okay. Uh, Thank you. It's not huge. It's... I don't know, maybe about a half inch. And now I see a little pink in this one, and this pet, this petal is tucked under that one. So I'm going to put a little pink down. That looks a little bright, but as we come back and add um, the purpley, light purpley gray color here, I'll kind of blend it in so that it doesn't just stand out so much like that. But still, it'll become quite interesting because I do have other colors other than just yellow and white and blue and white. I'm trying to stretch and see other colors that are in there and to help me um, get the the interest in the, the beautiful parts of the flowers. There's a little shadow here, put that in here. And then as we work our way up to the lighter colors, what one thing you can do is you can take a uh, real, if you put cad yellow white next to anything else, it's going to look really bright. So if I put that little highlight on the edge of that flower, it's going to make that flower look like the light's catching right on the edge. And then this is inside the flower, which is a little darker. The, the petal next to it also has that little highlight on the edge of it. And then it catches some light as it goes down into the flower. But up to that point, we may have a little bit of shadow. So what you're doing, you're basically painting one petal at a time, analyzing what you see, and as you put down your lights, pull your lights into your darker colors so that you get a soft edge 
and it feels like um, a gentle change from darks and lights. I'm going to sort of outline this petal right here just for a second so that we can see where the light is on the one that's behind it. The petal behind it is very light and we want it to be nice and bright. So I'm going to take my cad yellow and white and really put it on very bright. And then on the other side, it is going into a little bit of a shadow. But over here, this one also is very, very bright. So again, cad yellow and white, or you can use Naples and white, either one. And I'm trying to get it in nice and bright so that it stands out. We have um, this petal that's over here, not as tall, but it also is in shadow. So I'll put that one in there. And to separate these, I have to make one petal a little darker than the other. So I'm going to make this front one just a little bit darker right here, just so that we can feel that that's the one that's in front and the other one is behind. Um, we have a shadow on this one and a little bit of light also on the tip of it. If you do one petal at a time and analyze what you're seeing, you're going to have a better chance of getting the effect you want. If you jump all around and you put all your lights in and then you go back in and try to put some shadows in, you're going to get lost and you're going to have a hard time making this flower look like, um, you know, the way you want it. Now, that doesn't mean we're stuck with this. Uh, we will probably adjust it. I do see some right where this touches down. I see some warm colors. So I'm going to take maples with just a little bit of a... Burnt Sienna, you could use Cat Orange, you could use uh, Terra Rosa, but just so that right where it touches down, there's a little bit of warmth. And I might even take some Cad Yellow um, and add, oops, that might be a little too much, and put a little warmth there. Uh, if I feel that that's too much, I can always kind of tamper, tamp it down a little bit. I'm going to use a little yellow ochre just to kind of see if I can get that to calm down a little bit. And Again, just sort of blend stuff a little bit so it's not so noticeable. You want it to be there, but you don't want it to stick out like a sore thumb. And I also always like to add just a tiny bit of darkness, right, sort of, maybe right down in here, just to help. This is kind of an ultramarine blue and a little burnt sienna. Give it a little bit of dimension. Now, the other thing that will give this flower dimension is if we... Come in and now next to these really bright whites that we have we start putting in some uh, really super darks and that's with the green so to make a super dark you're going to take your normal mixture let's say of ultramarine blue and yellow ochre which will give you a green but it won't be a particularly dark green it will just be sort of a mid-tone green and then what you want to do is come in and add I would probably either add burnt sienna or burnt umber to that, and it's going to get very, very dark. But if you don't do that, you're not going to make this flower pop out. So in a couple places where it really looks dark, like right in here, we want it really dark green. It's interesting. My brush had real dark on one side and sort of a mid tone on the other. And real dark under, let's say, this petal. I also decided to take this off. And let this go like this. Um, so in some places we're going to have that really dark green, but then we want to transition out to more of a mid-tone green. And when we do that, then you can begin to add just add more yellow ochre to it. And let me just get a little bit bigger brush so that it goes a little faster. And just into that same mixture of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to add a little yellow ochre. Everything down here at the bottom of this canvas, we don't want to use any yellow green. In other words, don't use cad yellow in this area here because it's too close to the edge of the canvas and you really don't want to attract a lot of attention down here. And when you put your green in, shape your flower. In other words, as you paint this, shape the flower and make sure that the petal is the right shape that you want. So I'm going to take this dark green and I'm going to... Oops. I'm going to go ahead and make all of this pretty dark over here, mid-tone dark, let's say, um, because it is very close to the edge of the painting, and I really don't 
want people kind of looking there that much. Maybe even in the corner, they'll really, really get it. Um, but now we could go in and mix up a mid-tone green and go towards a yellow green. And what I mean by that is this time, instead of using uh, yellow ochre, you might use a little bit of cad yellow. So as we move up here, you could come in and begin to put a little more warmer green, which will then give you, I'm going to pull this out a little bit here, give you um, a little more interest towards the focal point. And that's because they are lighter and they will attract more attention. Before we block this leaf in, though, let's go ahead and get this flower in. I am going to just take a little bit of that mid-tone green, and around each of these petals, I'm going to redraw the petal as I put it down so that the petal looks clean. I'm trying not to hit the flower, but the petal looks clean and shaped properly. And... Um, and that's why I like to use a flat brush, or I'm using a bright, which is like a shortened version of a flat, because it's got a nice little chiseled edge, and I can make a nice straight line with it. Um, you don't want everything the exact same color. So when you put stuff down like this, you might come back in with that super, super dark green, and just in a couple of places, change it slightly, just so that everything's not exactly the same color. Uh, and that you do have a little variety. It just makes for a more interesting painting. All right, let's move on, and I'm going to go back to the white flowers again one more, and then we'll start working on lily pads and water. Again, this flower is kind of a focal point. Uh, you're going to be using the same kind of colors. If it's really bright white, you're going to use cad yellow light and white or naples, either one. If it has a little shadow, you're going to add that. And what I would kind of do is, this one is behind that one, so um, you can, if you want, do one of two things. You can make it a little brighter so it stands out a little bit more, or you can actually make it a little less bright so that it, it's not the focal point flower, it's sort of the backup flower. And that's kind of up to you. What I'm doing is just kind of, I pretty much had that flower blocked in pretty well. I'm just going to kind of add some super highlights right on the tips of the flower and blend it in. All the tips of the flowers are catching light, so very light at the tips. And then a little more blue-gray as you go down into the flower itself. The other thing is, same thing, right where it touches down, I'm going to take a little bit of that maples and a little bit of burnt. Uh, sienna, just a little bit of warm, just to give it a little warm color in there. You could also take your cad yellow and put a little bit of, oops, that might be too much, uh, put a little bit in there just to kind of give it a place where the flower is coming together and it feels really nice and warm. Again, I'm going to put a darker color under that petal right here so that we see that petal. This is a green, um, the green lily pad, and that one actually has a little shadow, which is kind of pretty, so let's first put it in, and then we'll work on the shadow. I'm going to just kind of block this in. I'm making this bigger than what I originally had down. Um, but you can see, the minute you put down a darker color, how all of a sudden the flowers stand out even more, and that's why you want to vary your greens. You don't want everything to be mid-tone green. In some places, you want it really, really dark. In other places, you can warm it up and put in more of a lighter color. Um, now, I'm going to fill this in real quickly, and then I'm going to add some yellow-green, because there is a lot of yellow hitting right in here. This is where you can take your cad yellow, and if you feel that it needs to be really bright, you can even use a little cerulean with it. I'm just going to kind of put it down first, cad yellow and a little ultramarine blue, and see if that's okay. Uh, there is a shadow caused by that, um, the petals of the flower, so I'm going to take a little bit of uh, cerulean there, for sure, and just in a couple places do a suggestion of those petals in, on the leaf, so that it looks like um, there's a shadow being cast. And shadows should be colors, not grays or browns. Or 
I might even get brighter than that right there. The other thing I want you to notice is the edge of these lily pads. If you look at them, they have a little, almost like a little lip to them. So I'm going to first just kind of draw the color, and then I'm going to take maybe like a dark, either dark green, or you can even use a dark purple, and kind of make that little edge almost like it's so that it's like a saucer that holds water um, in there. And also, same with this one, a little, little darker edge to it almost. And then I can soften that by just wiping my brush with the paper towel. And instead of just leaving it a thick line like that, just run my brush over it a couple times and just wipe each time I'm stroking. And it just kind of gets it blended a little bit better and looks a little more believable. But one reason why you want some darks under these lily pads is so that they lay flat in the water and not just like they're floating above. Now, as we move back, we're not going to ever use a color that's going to be bright green. I'm going to just throw some on here. I'm going to put this on here real quick. It could even go brighter than that. But we're never going to use anything yellow green back in here. This, These colors back here, as the farther we go back, the more muted green they get. And how do you get that muted green? Well, one way would be to, if you mix up a green, let's say, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, if you add a touch of cad red, and I do mean a pinpoint of cad red, it grays it a little bit. So what you can do is you can come in here and with your little regular mixture, add a pinpoint of cad red. And don't go crazy because if you add 50-50, you're, you're not going to have a green anymore. You're going to have a gray. So be very careful as you do that. But let's say, for example, as we move back in here, I redrew some of these with the with the um, pastel pencil, but uh, we don't want them real. Uh, we don't want them real bright yellow green. We really want more of a sedated green. And um, I'm just going to quickly go over some of the lines that I drew in there. And I had some of them blocked in, but I thought I needed a few more. The other thing you can do too is after you kind of get sort of your lily pads in there, take a little darker green and write, or even the darker blue even, and right at the base of them, you can come in and put, it's almost like the pad is ca causing a shadow on the water, just, but it makes the lily pads sit down and stay flat on the um, canvas, not, so it's not floating. And also, use this time do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question, and I've just explored this part of uh, art for a while. Um, making the early on the front of the early, mm -hmm. the, the, the one closest to you, yep. um, you're using, I, I take it you're using some foreshortening? Yes, absolutely. There's some uh, foreshortening. foreshortening, although I probably okay. didn't foreshorten it enough, which I could easily do by cutting it off a little bit more. I could cut this one off a little bit more. But yes, these ones in the front should be a little shorter because of the foreshortening quality that's happening here. Yes, very good, Brian. Okay, and how, how do you make that so... So it all looks like realistic? Well, what I would say is these look long and oval, right? These here. Right. But this one here, if you look at it, it's really more of a, if it's an oval, it's more like an egg as opposed to a long cylinder. So don't let, this one's probably still a little too big. I could still probably cut that off even a little bit more. You're trying to go for um, one that feels, you know, not quite so elongated. Now, as they get out here, they might be elongated, but anything in the front is not going to be. Okay. And the other thing you can do, too, to correct things is as you're putting in either leaves or water, you can redraw with your paint. So as I go around these, I'm going to try to be careful and put them in 
carefully so that I'm also drawing the petal at the same time. Um, I wanted to add a little um, lily bud. And last week when I blocked it in, I blocked it in up here with the green pads and it doesn't show up. So I think what I'm going to do is drop this just a little bit. And I'm going to take the lily bud and move it down, let's say right here. It might be hard to see for a minute, but I'll come back in and then I'll take some blue water above here and erase where I had it before so that you can see that bud because what was happening is it was blending in with the lily pads and you really couldn't tell that this was a bud. So I'm going to kind of go around it and I need to also to make that bud stand out because right now it's about the same value as the water and therefore you still can't see it. I'm going to come in with a little bit smaller brush and put a little bit of darkness. It almost looks like maybe it's dark green or it could be a little burnt umber, but I put a little bit of darkness right at the base of the bud. And also the stem of it, let's make one side of the stem just a little bit darker so that it shows up a little bit. Now in this case, the bud isn't white. Um, you could make it white if you want. I mean, you can always take artistic license. If you wanted to keep it green, I would probably go a little bit lighter up at the tip. Let's see if this is light enough. Maybe not. That might not even be light enough. So that it shows up and shows up as a bud. Yeah, that's it there. And then um, make sure that when you put your stroke marks down, when you clean up your around your, let's say, that bud or around the flower, Make sure that as you put your stroke marks down, you're going horizontal so that it looks like water that's laying flat, not like a waterfall flowing down the hill. So kind of after you put, after you go around the flower, then straighten out your stroke marks so that um, the water is laying flat. Uh, another time you might stroke down is if you were doing a reflection, and we'll do maybe that in a second, but let's, I'm going to just kind of stroke stroke these horizontally. So let's see now the bud will show up a little bit better. Um, I'm not crazy about this petal here. I may cut that one down. The nice thing about having the painting dry underneath is this is how you can correct it. You can take your paper towel and you can get rid of the excess paint that you have there. And then when you come back in with the brush, I'm going to come back in and do the back petal first. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. So it's not quite sticking up so much. More like that maybe. And then maybe take this uh, bud, the one in the front, or not bud, but the petal, and pull it over just a little bit like that. And you first just kind of block it in and then we'll go back in and put some highlight on one side. Again, to me that highlight feels a little warm on one side and more shadowy on the other. Okay, so let's take out a stroke mark. I like that color. Um, and as you're working, you're constantly going to see things that you want to, you know, adjust. And, and if you see them, then do it because later on you'll forget where you were going to adjust and you can't remember. So. Do it as you see it. Like if you see a highlight that you left off, like I see a highlight right here, I might gonna just go ahead and put it in there. Okay, so as we work our way up, these flowers here are not gonna have as much detail. They are gonna be lighter, but they could also be a blue white as opposed to a yellow white. I mean, they could have some yellow white on them, but they don't have to be quite as warm, mainly because they are farther away and we're not seeing them as clearly. We can also adjust the tops of them by taking the color of the water and either cutting them down or reshaping the petals right at the edges. And again, after you do that, straighten out your stroke mark. Um, I do think having these little green, um, I don't know what you would call them, little suggestions of petal, uh, green, not leaves, I guess they are leaves, but they kind of help uh, keep that little lily pad from 
looking like it's just a white flower growing out of nothingness. You know, by having these little darker green uh, things around them, it sort of helps anchor them too. Let's say you want to reflect a little bit. This one has a little, we could have a little water there. Remember, reflections aren't quite as bright as the real thing. So I would probably come in maybe with sort of white with just a little bit of blue. And you could just come in here. And this time, reflections, can you can stroke down because it's reflecting. And to make that reflection show up, come on either side of the reflection and get your darker blue water in there. Get a little blue water on either side of that one. I'm going to go back in now with the reflection one more time and just kind of let it like that. Um, you may not want to green pad right underneath that, but I may pull that reflection down just a little bit more. Also, um, I'm going to kind of blue-white blue these up just a little bit so they're not quite as bright as the front flower, mainly because they're not focal points, and therefore I really don't want them to have as much of an attention. They can have a little bit of creamy white, but I'd keep it more towards the tips of them as opposed to the whole flower. Like this whole flower is pretty light. Uh, maybe not so much there. And the other thing I want you to think about too is um, when we, we're getting ready to start the water, notice it's darker here, not as dark, gets a little bit lighter, gets a little bit lighter. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, if we want to put this cloud reflection in, we need to take a bristle brush that we have not used tonight. And notice that this is, the cloud reflection is not white like these flowers. So you're going to have to use probably a, a lighter blue. You know, a white with a little, maybe even a purpley white blue. Like ultramarine blue, touch of alizarin, and white. Wipe most of the paint off of your brush. And what I would do is start by just kind of scribbling. And you don't want it to be in a straight line. So as you put it on, I got, can't hit green. i got to be careful. As you put it on, you're barely putting any paint on the canvas. You're just kind of putting it down, and you're kind of scrubbing with your brush and letting some of that paint come off. I might even switch to maybe even a little more purpley white because in some places... That's not showing up, so let's go even darker. I got a little more ultramarine blue. In some places, you might scrub in a little darker blue in what, what next to the clouds. And again, go back to your lighter blue version. And uh, I mean, I see these clouds down here too, so we can kind of put them in. And you know, I'm trying not to have them all lined up like this is the lowest, then maybe this, then this, because if they all line up in a straight line, it's not going to look natural. So try to, and our brain loves to make everything line up. I mean, it, it just loves it. So we got to be really work at fighting that. And I'm just kind of scrubbing a little bit. I also sometimes use my fingers, and I just kind of take my fingers and rub the paint into the canvas a little bit. It's sort of, I don't know, Good way to soften without having the texture of the brush. I feel like I can control a little bit. I mean, if you wear rubber gloves, I don't think you can do this, but if you don't. Uh, I could come in there too, in a couple places, just go a little bit lighter. Just in a cup. Don't do it too much. I'm going to just add a little bit on there and wipe my brush again. Scrub it a little bit. But I don't want, I want this to look very light and airy. I don't want heavy clouds that feel like, you know, they got a lot of weight to them. And like, then it looks like something in the water. Um, as we go back into the water, you are going to have to get quite dark down here. And what I would suggest is if you take your ultramarine blue, add a touch of alizarin. The alizarin will actually make it a little more purple. And I am going to add some liquid this time so that it'll flow nicely. Now this may look really dark at first. Hold on. I don't want this to flip off my easel. 
but I'm going to put it down really dark like that. And then as I come up getting closer to where I just put those clouds in there, I'm going to add some white. And I'm going to try to avoid those clouds, actually. I'm just going to kind of tame that line that I just put in of the dark blue purpley. And as I get close to the clouds, just try not to go into the, where I put the clouds. Just kind of, kind of go around them a little bit. Um, and again, as we go up, notice this is really, really dark. This is not so dark up here. So as you go up here, I'm going to barely touch my brush in case I have it too dark. No, that's good. But as you go up here, you don't want your uh, blue water as dark as you have it at the bottom. The reason is, is that if you were looking at the scene, this is farther away from your eyesight. And so the water is catching more of the sky. Whereas here, you're looking down into the water a little bit, and you're not seeing as much reflection of the sky. But by having variations of this dark blue and a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter, it will give you a really nice feeling of uh, depth, and uh, I'm going to get this really dark in this corner. It'll give you some feeling of real nice depth to your water. And um, this could be dark over here, too. This is the edge of the painting, so it's not as important over here. But as we move towards this, I don't want to get too dark or that bud isn't going to show up. So again, I'm going to just kind of let this kind of intermingle and slightly change as we go up. It gets a little lighter as we go up. Um, a little bit of blue in there. And of course, as we get up here, you might even add some cerulean to your blue so that it looks a little bit different. But do you see how that feels very cloud-like? Because I have not gone in there and made very definite lines. Everything's very soft and just scrubbed on there very lightly. Uh, and it gives you a nice feeling to those um, to those clouds. Now, with these all of these lily pads back here, I would suggest using cerulean blue and yellow ochre, and that will give you a mid tone, but a cooler mid tone. So it won't be. I'm going to lighten it a little bit with maybe some uh, maples, but not much. I don't want it real light, but I want it a little bit light. Um, Still could be a little lighter. Yeah. But I'm trying to not go too light, not too dark. Sort of just like Mama uh, got three pigs. Not too big, not too little, just right. So I'm going to come in here and kind of put in my lily pads. And right now what I'm doing is I drew where I wanted them with the pastel because I wanted to have a few more than what I originally had down. There, I did put another bud in here. But in order for that bud to show up, I am going to have to take that one lily pad out, I think. So let's put a little bit, I see a little bit of whiteness right at the tip of that bud. And then some green. Hey, Jane? Mm -hmm. Can you change your angle a little bit? I'm, I'm, I'm getting your, more of your hair than the... Uh, okay. Tell me, when it's, thank you. tell me when it's good. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. And then Thank a, little, you. a little dark. Yeah. I'm glad you tell me because I don't know. When I'm painting, I don't look at the screen. A little darkness right at the base of that bud. And I'm going to take some of the blue water right around it and kind of, oops, that's too dark. Kind of clean up the shape of that base of that bud. And I think I'm going to make this blue water as opposed to green. Oh, I just hit that reflection. Let me go back and put that back in. Sorry about that. All right, now, um, the other thing you want to do is after you get all, and when you do these ones, these um, lily pads back here, you don't have to be so careful. First of all, they're much more like flat discs. They're not rounded. They're not like a whole lily pad. We're seeing them at a distance. So now they're looking more very flat looking. And as you put them in, Keep them that way so that they don't um, get too. I don't know why, I can't... It looks light on my palette, but then when I put it on my um, 
and I put it on my canvas, it looks darker. But what I was going to say is, put, a, put all the green in, and this time you don't have to do it like you did the flowers, petal by petal. We're going to go in here and put these in here, and then we're going to come back and add some uh, darks underneath them to help them sit flat. And um, let some of them overlap each other. You know, nothing worse than all these separate leaves. You know, you want some of them overlapping, like this one might be overlapping with these. And I'm just taking a little dark bluish purple and going around the base of them, every one of them, so that, number one, they sit down on the ground, I mean, on the water. They're not floating. Uh, they feel like they're anchored. And also, it helps define them a little bit better, too. Not that these have to be, they don't really have to be in focus so much. These are much more loosely painted than the ones down here. But you do want some form in the sense that we want to know that they are uh, you know, lilies and uh, lily leaves and not just green scum on the water. And so what I'm doing is just going under each one and adding a little bit of uh, darkness to help make them sit down. And there's nothing wrong with them going off the canvas either. I mean, you don't have to try to keep everything. It looks like I stopped, but maybe I shouldn't. Make one or two go off the edge so that it's not like these do. I think that looks good. Now, with the water, as we move our way up, we are going to go a little bit lighter. And I, like I said, I would add a little more cerulean to your blue, just so that it looks a little bit different than what's below. It looks like it's getting a little lighter as you go up. So I'm going to, this might be too light. Let's see. Yep, that's too light. Get a little more cerulean, a little more ultramarine blue. All right. And then as you put it in, again, cut around your flowers, help, I'm not flowers, your uh, leaves, and help shape them a little bit. But also, after you cut around them, straighten out your stroke mark so that it doesn't look like a waterfall. If you paint up and down like that, you're going to have a waterfall. So make sure that after you paint around them, straighten them out a little bit just so that they um, look like they are laying, the water's laying flat. The other thing you can do is, let's say you have an area, if you ever have an area where you can't, you're not really sure it's reading as water, even if it's not in the photograph, you can do something like this, where you take a little bit of paint and you just put a little uh, suggestion of a ripple or something. That tells people this is water. You don't always have to do that, but if you feel like it's not working for some reason, then do that, and it will tell people that that's what it is. Now, one of the things I've tried to do in this painting is to have sort of this diagonal, and uh, I constantly check to make sure that I am doing that. But if I didn't have these over here, it might look a little bare. So I added a few over on this side, but I tried not to uh, give them much definition. In other words, these are in here, but no, uh, nothing real developed. It's more of a suggestion of lily pads in this section. And again, you can kind of take your blue and clean up a little bit around them. If they feel a little messy, just get some blue or darker blue and kind of clean up around them a little bit. Now, the other thing is, um, I'm going to... As you, if you paint close to these flowers, you are going to have to paint up and down with stroke marks to get cut into them, but then straighten it out before you go back in. This, to me, uh, feels a little too round. These are all flat, and this one's a little bit too round. So I might come back in here and, again, cut this one down just a little bit with the blue, just so it feels like it's more uh, at a distance. Uh, after you finish, like right now, I can't very well step back. It's very hard for me to step back because uh, I'm kind of locked into this little space that I'm in. But it's important to, uh, oops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to make a little darker green there. It turned out bright yellow. Um, step back and see how it's looking from a distance. You know, you want, you want things to look uh, good. And they've got to read from a distance because when you hang a painting on the wall, that's where it's going to 
hang. It's not going to hang, you know, two inches in front of your face. I'm going to put a little reflection right in there. Um, and maybe this little um, bud needs either one, a stem, or I need to anchor it so that it's sitting down in the water. One of the two. I think I'll see if I can get it just to sit flat in the water. So putting a little dart around it as well as at the base of it. Same with all of these. I would probably come in here and take my purple blue, that's alizarin with ultramarine blue, very dark, and just in a couple places, make a few little darks. It just helps make things sit properly on the water. Make this one sit. Um, maybe some of these in the front, make them a little darker. And at this point, I'm mainly just kind of cleaning up all that I put down last week. You know, where, where I put the blue in last week, I didn't necessarily cover the canvas completely. I can see little uh, white peeking through or just, you know, less paint pe peeking through. So this is where I would go in and kind of make sure I got nice thick paint down everywhere so that it doesn't feel developed here and weak back here. Uh, but like I said, anything that's water, try to make sure your stroke marks are laying relatively flat. Now, any questions so far? You can unmute yourselves. And I'm just, I'm just adding a few little darks under some of these. Jane, can you talk more about the, because uh, I have some pink flowers. Okay, so if you're doing pink flowers, you're going to use various shades of pink. I would probably use something like permanent rose or phthalo red rose and um, add white to it. You could also lighten it with naples as opposed to white, which would also give you a, a warmer pink. However, when you go into the shadows of the pink, uh, you're going to probably end up using some blues in there, ultramarine, ultramarine blue or cerulean blue with your permanent rose or whatever, and a little bit of white, but so that the, um, let's see, I have paint here. So that your shadows are pink with a maybe a purplish cast to them. And that'll right. give you a nice look too. And let's say you're doing yellow because, you know, these can be yellow too. Again, you might use the cad yellow and white for your lighter colors of your yellow flower. But in the shadows, you might go more yellow ochre and maybe even add, again, uh, either a little bit of greenish to your yellow ochre. Because sometimes yellow in a shadow looks sort of a greenish yellow. Uh, so you can... Try that. Jane, mm -hmm. when you send us the um, your color list after the fact, would you be sure to include the yellow variations and the pink variations? Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, great idea. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, this is the kind of thing, too, that I would probably take a look at um, either tomorrow or, you know, later on when I can step back from this and see, does everything look like it's reading correctly? So, for example, I might think, okay, it looks fine, but then when I get back from there, I may not like how something looks. Like, uh, I'm still not happy with, with these petals right here in the front. Kind of, I may have to work on this flower a little bit. I'm not as happy with that. I think part of it is the shape of them. But, um, but I would probably let it dry, and then, of course, like I said, anytime you let something dry, it's so much easier to clean it up than it is doing it wet into wet. Um, hey, Jane, that really bright green, like on the bottom of the... Right here? Um, yeah. No, like in the photo, that looks kind of like a cad green. Would you, like, use, like, a straight cad green or, like, a really bright green or... It seems like you always mix your greens. I do. I don't really own cad green. If you have it, you can try it. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, I just don't. I, I don't own it. But um, I'm sure it would work. Uh, I tend to have a tendency to mix my greens. Uh, I try to not have 500 tubes of paint. But, um, you know, sometimes you get in a paint store and you can't resist. You end up buying stuff that you weren't planning on. So try it out and see if you like them, you know. See how you like the, the paint. A couple of other things. Um, I did talk with our framer, Rob, and he bought a bunch of gold molding, and he's going to make a bunch of frames in different sizes. And when he does, he, when he finishes, he'll call me. I'll go pick them up and take them over to our, cla our classroom over at Drew, 
and I'll send out an email to everybody and we'll pick a day or two days with a big time period, like a two hour time period so that everybody doesn't have to come at the same time. And, um, you know, you can take a look and see if you like any of them. I would suggest you bring your paintings with you to try them on and see if you like them. Um, also, if numbers of COVID go down and people are getting their vaccines, which I've heard on the news tonight that they think by end of April, anybody of any age is going to be able to get one because um, they just got 200 million more doses of one of the vaccines. Um, we may open up uh, a class in person, but it would be uh, only six people per class. So I think what I would do is have one in the morning with six people and one in the afternoon with six people. Uh, and he suggested maybe you meet every other week so that then I could have another, like let's say the first week I have group A and group B, and one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And the next week I have group C and group D, so another six and six. And then the next week we'd go back to group A and B. And that way, you know, it may not work. I mean, if numbers go up in COVID again, then no, it's not going to happen. The thing is, Arlington County schools are going back March the 2nd for K through 2, and then March 9th, everybody else. So as long as that's successful, they may end up opening schools and we could have class. I will continue to have the online class through the summer, and we'll see how it goes in the fall. Raul also suggested that maybe I teach the online class, whatever the theme is, before I actually have the in-person class. And that way, if people take both, then the next day when they come in for the in-person class, they can do what I did as the demo, you know, the night before or the day before or whatever. Anyway, these are some things we're thinking about. And I just thought I'd let everybody know. Um, but that's a ways off. So any other questions? Well, I've really enjoyed... Uh, your yes. painting is lovely. Oh, thanks. I'll show you the other one I did this afternoon. Let me grab it real quick. Hold on. This one is uh, the same two flowers, uh, different layout, uh, darker green, like forest in the background with a little reflection in the water. Um, but uh, I've really enjoyed seeing, first of all, the block ins that you all did with the uh, water lilies. They were very pretty. And I also enjoyed seeing everybody's studio that posted. You know, I had somebody in my afternoon class that was just started painting and she wanted to set up a studio and she didn't know how to do it. And people put stuff up and it really gave her a lot of good ideas. So that was very nice of everybody posting those. I'm, do you need some more? Yeah, I mean, post them on Jane's Fabulous Artist, and that way everybody can see them. And uh, We took the picture but didn't post, so. Oh, yeah, well, go ahead and post it because, you know, she still hadn't set her studio up yet, and she's getting ideas. And actually, one person, Cindy Donahoe, said after seeing everybody's studio, she realized she had her easel with the back to the window. So she said, I realize I need to turn my easel around so that the light from the window is coming in. And so that helped her with her studio. So everybody can get ideas. Some people look like they had like a designer studio with oriental rugs. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, mine looks like a mess. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you know I'm a slob. You've seen my classroom. <laughs> so, well, I hope everybody enjoyed that. And let's hope that the recording turned out. Any other questions? Do we, so we do not have class next week? So next week, no class. That will give you time to work on your water lily paintings or whatever you're working on. If you're working on something else, that's fine too. But I don't want you to have a stack of unfinished paintings. I want you to everybody to try to finish up whatever you start. I want you to try to finish it. So you have this week to finish it and next week to finish it. Then when we come back, we'll have two weeks in a row. We're going to be doing palette knife painting. And in this one, I would recommend... Um, I thought maybe we would do one week, we'd do a, a landscape palette knife, and the next week we'll do a, a flower still life. And I'll send some examples to give you ideas. One time I had this painting, somebody had given me some pink 
tulips and they were so beautiful and I just thought, oh, I got to paint them. So I spent the whole day painting them. And when I finished, I looked at it and I went, it's a so what painting, you know, eh, pink tulips, so what? So I put it away and I left it for probably a couple years and I finally pulled it out. I thought, you know, this is not doing anything for me. So I decided to take a palette knife to it and I went over all of my flowers with a palette knife and put on the light pinks and the dark pinks and then the leaves. And when I finished it, it was a great painting. So if you have any paintings that you absolutely hate, turn it into a palette knife painting and it'll be a beauty. So keep that in mind too. What I would suggest, yes. If you, if you still own that one, will you show it to us next class? Yeah, I don't own it. It's sold, but I have photos of it and I will, I hope I have photos of the pre and post. I know I have the palette knife one, but if you could see it before, it was like drab. I mean drab. And the palette knife painting actually turned out really great. So they're, they're very fun to do and they're very quick to do. Um, I do suggest that, you know how we started this where we had a block in and let it dry? That helps because in palette knife, if you miss a spot, you don't want white canvas showing through. That'll weaken your look. So even if you just tone it, that would help. Or if you want to just kind of block out big shapes, that helps too and let it dry before you start using the palette knife on it. But we'll talk about more of that and I'll send some photos to you of palette knife paintings just so you get you in the mood. But in the meantime, don't get in the mood for that yet. I want you to finish your water lilies and get those done. Have some fun with them. Uh, I mean, some of the paintings I've seen so far of the blockins, I mean, I was blown away how beautiful they were. And everybody, you know, I think because Monet painted water lilies so much, everybody loves water lilies. When they see them in a painting, they go, oh, that's so beautiful. So hopefully... So, will you let us know what... Um knives we need for the yeah, palette knife. I'll show okay, you right, right now. Um, you don't need a lot. I mean, I would try to get these ones that are shaped in the form of, they're almost like a triangle at the end, but then they cut back in like a diamond. So it's like a yeah. diamond shape. And, you know, if you have one of these, you're fine. If you want a little one to get in small places, maybe. But they're very easy to control. You, you put the paint on by using the sides of them and scrape it on. And if you need a little bit in a corner, you just put it on the corner of your knife and put it on. So, and I'll show you all the techniques of using it so that you get a good result. But um, that's two weeks away. So don't even think about palette knife paintings right now. <laughs> I want you to think water lilies, right? All right, everybody. I love you. I miss you. And I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you. All right. Beautiful. Bye. Bye. It's always beautiful. Thanks. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Love, love the class. Thanks. Let's hope the recording worked. All right. Where are we? No. Oh, it didn't. I do not understand why.
I'm gonna. I gotta clean up pups.
Oh, you're so cute. Look at Kiki. I gotta clean up pups. What? And all of the damage and so on. So this 